ladies and gentlemen, race fans all, to today's Rowdy.com Big Three, where we talk about NASCAR racing. I'm Bassmaster. He's Buzz Cutler. I am indeed, and today's Big Three is the Texas pre-race edition. Everything's bigger in Texas. Really? That's what they tell me. I don't know. Are, are carbon atoms bigger? In Texas? Absolutely. I'm just asking the question. Absolutely. So lootly. Well, one thing I can tell you about Texas Motor Speedway, this is a big, fast downforce racetrack, and we've got two of the final three races on downforce tracks, but Texas is a little trickier, Cutler. It's not exactly like every other downforce track you're going to hit. And it's trickier for a couple of reasons. First of all, one and two is different than three and four. Three and four is flatter. Second of all, as driver after driver after driver tells us, you've got this abrupt change out of the corners into the straights. It like flattens out really suddenly. We've got so many drivers talking about this. Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, Jeff Burton, Jeff Gordon. Which one do we choose? I, I think you should talk to Tony Stewart. He's a guy who... Well, I don't have that quote. Well, we've got it somewhere. Okay. Bye. Tony Stewart, Cutler. It is another mile and a half, but the way it was designed was, uh, you know, the apron being as wide as it is, that was intended for the Indy cars. So the transitions in the corners and off the corners are a little more abrupt than, than what we have at most of the mile and a half tracks. So uh, it makes uh, racing at Texas a little more challenging than some of the other mile and a halfs we go to. And, and, and it's not just kind of the same old mile and a half. I mean, it's shaped the same, but the way the banking banks in and out is quite a bit different. Mastering the transition is really a key to this track, but at the same time, you got to believe that, as we've seen all year on these downforce racetracks, with this car, the dynamic of these races, track position is going to be critical. Remember how well Jeff Gordon was running here in the spring when he made a four-tire call, got back in the pack, kind of was in it with Jimmy Johnson, got wrecked. So I think track position is going to be very, very important as we get down well, to the end of this race. Tony Stewart also had a very strong car here in the spring, started on the pole, and because he was back in the pack at one point, didn't he get wrecked as well? He might have, I Cutler. I think he did. We've seen at all these downforce tracks that clean air, even though Texas has a nice wide racing groove. So you can race from the bottom to the top now as the track has aged. But even with that, track position is still very, very important. I think a big key here is get your car to handle everywhere. If you can get your car to work from top to bottom or anywhere in between, that's going to give you a lot better options as far as passing guys because you'll be able to get away at least a little bit from the turbulent air that's coming off their car. But even so, even if you get your car to work top, middle, and bottom, there are some guys who aren't going to take advantage of that. Mark Martin, for instance, isn't going to leave the security blanket of that white line. Boy, I wish I would drive high. But I won't. If I do, I'll hit the wall. So uh, I am most comfortable and 99% expected to be on the white line the whole time. Although the high groove gets to work and the middle groove can work. And once in a while, I might find myself looking for something up off the bottom. But for me, I've spent 35 years working on rolling the bottom of the racetrack. And uh, I'm still better at that than I am riding the wall. Now, for issue number two, I think we have to talk about... The, spe the specific three drivers yeah. who are in championship contention and how they approach this race. Jimmy Johnson has won here. Denny Hamlin won here. As a matter of fact, finished just ahead of D Jimmy Johnson in the spring. Kevin Harvick has never won here, but as you've said many times, RCR has much better downforce packages now than they have in years past. How do you approach this race if you're one of those three guys. Well, I think it's very clear from what they've each said, and certainly Kevin Harvick has said this, you want to go for the win if you can, but the main thing you have to do, as the doctors say, Cutler, is first, do no harm. You cannot screw up, because even if you run, even if you get beat by one of these other guys, if you're still in the top 10, you won't lose a ton of points. If you end up 25th, 30th, 38th, like Jimmy did last year, you're going to lose so many points that you're probably going to be out of it with three guys in this race. So what the first thing you have to do is avoid the big mistake. And the challenge is, while avoiding that bad finish, while avoiding that catastrophe, you also need to do what you can to separate yourself from the other two guys. You can't just sort of bide your time, try to keep it close, and then lay it all on the line at Homestead. I think you actually can do that. What if you have a problem at Homestead, though? You can have a problem anywhere. We have to acknowledge that. But the first thing you have to do is not push it too much. Kevin Harvick has said this very thing. You can't try to force it. Now, if you've got your car working, you're going to be as aggressive as you can. You just cannot be 
too aggressive and take yourself out of contention. That's just the way it is. On the other hand, if you're Denny Hamlin or Kevin Harvick and you look at Phoenix and you look at Jimmy Johnson's 4.9 finishing average at Phoenix, you might say to yourself, look, I have to grab what advantage I can now because it is highly unlikely I will be able to get any advantage over Jimmy Johnson at Phoenix. There's something else you really have to keep in mind here, though. Three races to go, we know who our championship contenders are. So if I'm one of them, I know who the other two guys I'm racing are. Therefore, I can make decisions based on how they're running that day or what they're doing out on the track that day. So I think that's a really important difference between the race now and maybe what we had prior to Talladega, where theoretically somebody else could still get back into it and you kind of had to run your own race. Now, you can compete with these guys heads up, see what they're doing, how your car is working, and make some decisions from there. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about picks. Is your pick for the race winner going to come from those three guys, or are you going to look outside like at a Greg Biffle or a Carl Edwards? I, I think Biffle and Edwards are interesting picks just because of how well the Roush cars have done here over the year. Carl Edwards, one guy with three wins here. Uh, only Jeff Burton is an, Jeff Burton's the only other guy with multiple wins here, and he has two. Of course, one of those, I think, came in a Roush car. So I, I think... It's interesting to look at the Roush cars, but if you're asking me who I think is going to win this race, I don't think it's going to come from the Roush stable just because I just don't think they're there yet. I don't think they're there yet. I would be much more inclined to look at a Tony Stewart to win here, or even a Jeff Gordon to win here, than I would one of the Roush cars. Roush Fenway has seven victories at this track. That's more than any other team, yep. but I, I agree with you. I just don't see it this I could season. see a Kyle Busch coming out and winning here. Kyle Busch led over 230 laps and didn't win this race one year. So, yeah, Kyle Busch is always a good pick. Of course, the championship contenders are guys you could see winning this race, I, certainly. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Denny Hamlin sweep this track this season. Well, he would like to do that very much. Jimmy Johnson should be right there, provided he can avoid Sam Hornish Jr. <laughs> Who's your official pick? Sam Hornish Jr. No, um, my official pick. I'm going to I'm going to go with Denny Hamlin. I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to make the easy pick, but uh, I think he could do it. I think he can get it done, and I think this is where Denny Hamlin makes the statement that I am this year's champion. All right. Well, that'll be interesting. I'm going to go with Tony Stewart this weekend. See what the 14 car can do. For Cutler, I'm Bass Masters. We'll be back here on Monday at Rowdy.com to talk about it. Until then, do join us at the website. Lots of great forums over there. Post your own blog. Lots of great blogs over there. You can even comment on this very video. So do join us if you can, and we'll hope to talk to you again on Monday. And let's leave you with this little taste Ooh. of Carl Edwards on Texas. Ooh. Those smile hats just always have felt good, and Texas is a really good one to win. That's a, a big check they give you, a nice cowboy hat. You get the guns. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a fun one to win. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.